So Bills fans, here we are once again, uh, Hashtag Sports coming to you uh, at a different time than we usually do. So we just wanted to uh, release this video really quick for you guys because the big news came down from the Buffalo Bills today that they have brought up Duke Williams to the 53-man roster. He will play against the Tennessee Titans tomorrow um, as the Tennessee Titans are 2-2 two and two going against the 3-1 and one Bills. How much of an impact will he have on this game? So I know a lot of you, uh, a lot of you Bills Mafia and everyone are so excited that Duke Williams has now finally been brought up to the 53-man roster. However, uh, I think that we need to, just as we did at the beginning of the season with the Bills themselves, you know, with this defense and everything, all the new moving parts on this offense, I think we need to temper our expectations when it comes to Duke Williams. The thing that I think you should probably grasp was that I know everyone has been calling for Zay Jones's head based on the game that uh, the Buffalo Bills just played against the New England Patriots. After Brown and Beasley, who's your third option on the offense as far as from a wideouts perspective? Um, Zay Jones did not perform very well. I think a lot of the a lot of the focus was on the interceptions that uh, Zay Jones failed to break up, uh, so to speak, and not going up to get the ball. And then uh, all the Buffalo Bills fans were thinking, okay, well. You got this guy on your practice squad that does go up and get the ball. I thought it was very interesting. However, the thing that I think you need to realize with with Zay Jones in that role that he was playing is that Robert Foster was inactive. And I've said it on a couple of the streams that we had this week. I just wanted to put a big focus on it right now, now that Duke has finally been called up. Uh, Zay Jones is not Robert Foster. He doesn't have that type of dynamic. To, he doesn't bring that type of dyna- dynamic to the game and to the position. He's a slot guy. He, he works well in the slot. His blocking has been improving. I know a lot of people don't want to hear about him. I don't care if he blocks. I want him to catch the ball. I understand that. However, if you think about the things that Zay Jones does do well, it's not what Robert Foster does well. And that could take a lot of different interpretations. I understand that. However, if you look at the snap counts, Foster did not play against the New England Patriots. He was inactive. So, therefore, uh, he's been playing roughly around 20, you know, 22% of the snaps, uh, offensive snaps when he's been in there. Zay Jones, in the previous game, he only played 51% of the snaps against the Bengals and had jumped to 75% for the New England Patriots. Now, I know it's not one-to-one, but you think about – Andre Roberts only played eight snaps. McKenzie only played one, and he was usually playing 17, 18, 19 snaps. If you think about it in that respect, the things that you ask Robert Foster to do, Zay Jones just isn't isn't successful at doing those things, and I understand that. However, when it comes to Duke Williams, I don't believe Duke Williams is cut from a mold like a Robert Foster. So I know Foster will probably be active for this game coming up, so Duke Williams won't be asked to do that. So what are you going to ask Duke Williams to do? He's going to be a red zone target. A lot of people want to say, oh, he can go up and get the ball. He can be a red zone guy. Uh, we, we wish we had one last week. Well, you, first you got to get to the, end, the red zone to have a red zone target. The Buffalo Bills have been very, very successful this year moving the ball along. I think what people are going to be surprised about with this game, if things play out the way I think they're going to play out, is that Duke Williams is going to be used more of, of a blocker and as like an H-back role with the question mark about the Marco. You got the question mark about, um, you know, the Ty Nasecki uh, hasn't practiced all week. So now you're going to have Cody Ford out there all on his own. Uh, so what, is, what does Duke Williams bring you? Well, he brings you size at a position that usually doesn't have it. Uh, you look at the fact that Jason Kroom is on IR, roughly around the same size as guys, but – and then – what you saw what Duke Williams did in the preseason was he wasn't afraid to get his nose dirty and get in there and block. So now you have an edge guy that's going to send um, the t- – uh, just let me get it real quick. Now you have an edge guy that's going to send the tandem of Isaiah Mack and Cameron Wake wider to get to Josh Allen. So Josh Allen just coming off a of concussion protocol. He said he's ready to go. You want guys that are going to go after him to take a longer route. And that's what Duke Williams provides you. Uh, I don't think that if Duke Williams was asked to play the role of a Robert Foster, he couldn't do it. I don't think he could. Uh, which t- which brings brings the question, how unique is the skill set of Robert Foster on this team? I really think uh, he brings a, a very unique dynamic along with John Brown and Cole Beasley. Uh, but they all have different skill sets. They all have vastly different skill sets, and, and, and it, as does Zay Jones. So uh, I think what people need to do uh, – at least in my my eyes, I'm going to temper my expectations with Duke Williams tomorrow. I know that uh, if 
if he catches a, if he, if he catches a jump ball in the end zone for a touchdown, um, Bills Mafia might destroy uh, Nashville tomorrow. So that being said, um, everybody enjoy the game tomorrow. But just just be sure to temper the expectations that you have for Duke Williams and what he is going to be doing for the Buffalo Bills tomorrow against the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> Thank you.